How's it going? Charles Botenston here. Welcome to the monthly market report. First of all, I just want to talk about some updates that we have. We're going to be coming out with the, not only we have the online publication for all the articles that we put together, but we're going to get the physical mailing out. So if you guys have any questions or if you are a creator yourself, then we're going to be reaching out to you. Today, we're going to be talking about the quarter three Manhattan, Brooklyn and Queens marketplace. So wherever you live, we're going to cover you, except if you're Staten Island or the Bronx, and I would just go to someone else if that's where you live. <laughs> Manhattan, first of all, uh, sales prices have dipped 2% year over year to $1.1 million. Um, obviously, that's nothing new. That's something when the amount of inventory, which is 5,000 new homes have come onto the market and it has increased the inventory to 8%. That's obviously a lot. Increasing year over year, one in five homes, so 20% of homes, had price cuts, which is 13% more. So in other words, the three figures that I just tossed out is that the sales price has dipped 2%. More homes are on the market, which obviously is Econ 101. More supply, less demand equals lower prices. It's only 2%, which this is the thing. You know, before I even get into the, the further numbers, a lot of people say, oh, what's going on with the marketplace? We went through a rapid, ridiculous seven years in Manhattan where all the owners were saying they put their home on the market and they're like wow that, that went really quick it went after the first open house earlier this year we put on like 10 homes that went immediately so when i when i give you these numbers when i give you these figures just keep in mind this is a normal marketplace this is normal before it was irregular it was you, you could just put a home on the market and it would sell you know for sale by owner you, you'd put your home up there, it would sell. Or if you were expired and you actually expired listing and then you went with another agent and they give you the proper pricing, it's gonna sell. Rents also rose. So obviously when rents rise, econ, again, 101, if the rent goes up, if the price goes up and people say, listen, 3250 is the all-time high for rents. It rose the most on the Upper East Side. Obviously, inventory up there has also risen. So to, and obviously the Q train, a lot of people are moving from Brooklyn back into Manhattan because the L train shut down, which we're gonna get to in a second. However, if the rents rise to the price that people say, listen, why am I spending all this money? Why don't I just buy? So that's what I'm most curious about. I'm gonna be coming out with a trend, uh, it's known as trends, feelings, and forecasts. And it's gonna be a monthly thing where I, I just see I just have a really good pulse of the market and I just want to make sure that what I'm seeing is actually happening and that's something to, to keep aware is as rents have risen and as inventory of sales have risen do the people that are renting and they say listen I'm, I'm spending 3200 why don't I just pump that into a place that I'm gonna I can gain equity I could write off on taxes obviously talk to your accountant but that's the interesting is all these 5,000 homes that came on in Manhattan and then we're gonna get into Brooklyn and Queens are they gonna get absorbed you know that that's the question to ask. Moving on to Brooklyn's home prices stagnated at 721,000 on average North Brooklyn. So you kind of have two parts of Brooklyn. You have downtown Prospect Heights, you know, area, and then anything above that near the L train, which you call North Brooklyn. So North Brooklyn and Prospect Park saw the largest increases in home price. North Brooklyn, I feel that the reason that North Brooklyn has gone up is the actual amount of the new conversions and the new construction. In Williamsburg, they were converting lofts left and right. It kind of looked like Miami out there. You had cranes everywhere. Obviously, they're, they're not as bullish on massive high rises that we see in Hudson, Yards, where you know, and obviously one Vanderbilt, though that's commercial space, there's a lot of retail in Hudson Yards, and one Vanderbilt is obviously that's going to be office space, and then obviously down in the World Financial Center, you have just a, a ridiculous amount of construction going on, and obviously that's going to affect the luxury marketplace and then turn it into a normal market. That's the best way to look at it. Brooklyn inventory rose 16 percent, which is a lot. 16%, uh, so in other words, the amount of new homes that came on the market year over year, Q3 of last year, Q3 of this year has gone up 16%, except for North Brooklyn, where the inventory dipped, and that's why the, the home prices went up in North Brooklyn. It's a trade-off, so I was actually talking to someone at the gym today. He sold his home in, in Battery Park City and moved out to North Brooklyn. I said, oh, along the L train? He said, yes. So we're gonna talk about rents, so recorded sales. The amount of recorded sales dropped 16%. This is where the curiosity takes over because we're entering a normal marketplace where it's not right after the first open house. You're going to
gonna have to price it, not to feelings, but you're gonna have to actually price it to comparables. You know, you're gonna have to go to the data. You're gonna have to look at what other homes have sold. And listen, rents rose 2% again in Brooklyn. So that, that's an interesting trade-off, except North Brooklyn, it went down 2% ahead of, obviously the L train is shutting down April, 2019. They say it's gonna be for 18 months, you know, 20 months, whatever amount. You know, we, we saw how long the, the, the second Avenue subway took, the Q train, whatever you wanna call it. Also rent cuts, which is very important. So the only way to actually get people to continue renting is through two ways. Number one is you offer incentives. An incentive is we pay your broker or there's no minimal money down or we give you free months. And the other way is obviously through price cuts. So price cuts dropped 6%. So the amount of actual incentives to renters has gone down. So if you're a landlord, you're doing pretty well. If you're an owner, you're getting a little, uh, okay, what's going on right now? Moving on to Queens, obviously shout out to my mom. She uh, grew up in Queens. Sales price, she is licensed at, at the company. So, uh, so that is a good proper shout out. Uh, sales prices increased 5%. So this is this is also a very interesting area is that I've talked about it multiple times before in other market reports is that when you're taking the Long Island Railroad and you're going from Penn Station and you're going out to Long Island and you look out to the left side, in other, in other words, the north side of the Long Island Railroad, you just see just a massive just inventory of brand new rentals and brand new condos. And they are, they're gorgeous. And obviously that has something to do with the sales price and that has something to do with the rental price. When you're actually putting on these, these beautiful new developments that are garnering studios at $2,800, $3,000, that's obviously gonna make sure, or not make sure, that's gonna make the sales price increase, which it did. It increased 5%, 534,000. The Rockaways, which obviously were hit extremely hard during Sandy. Rockaway's totally different area of Queens as opposed to obviously Astoria and Long Island City. But the Rockaway's is up 14%. I think there's a bunch of people that are bullish that there's not gonna be a super storm that comes and hits again, but that's, you know, that's up to them and their insurance company and their flood zone and everything else, you know, fingers crossed that that doesn't happen again. I know a lot of people that were affected by it. Price cuts rose in Queens the most, 4%, which still isn't a lot of money. I'm sorry, not a lot in percentage terms. So in other words, the amount of homes that actually had to drop their pricing was 4%. This is again, quarter to quarter of last year to this year, recorded sales went down. So it's very interesting, there's three things that really uh, mark the the marketplace number one is the amount of inventory which is obviously what you could buy the amount of homes on the market the amount of people that are buying those homes and obviously the amount of people that are moving into contracts so you have just a baseline of people that come to open houses the baseline of people which is the people that actually move forward with buying you know there's a little hesitancy there again normal marketplace and then the amount of homes that are available to buy rent stagnated at 0.7 percent you know Nothing new there, I would say. Uh, only 4% had price cuts. So you're really looking at a, a kind of an uh, anomaly. So I think anomaly really happened for two reasons. Number one is, and these are just my thoughts and feelings I'm gonna bring up at another time. I think the reason that you have a rent still rising is because they're locked into a lease, number one. Number two is that there's a lot of luxury rental homes that are coming on the marketplace. If you look at Hudson Yards, if you look at Long Island City, even downtown Brooklyn, you have these, these massive doorman high rises that are not garnered pre-war uh, pricing. And the second thing is with sales. Sales is very month to month, week to week, actually. You know, you know, I talked to owners, I said, listen, you, you put your home on the market at the right time because we found a buyer at this time. It slowed down July, August, September. People were still spending money. It's not like they stayed in Manhattan. They just didn't spend money on real estate. Right now, we're seeing a normal marketplace. It's very interesting to see as we move into November. So this is the October market report year over year, quarter to quarter. These numbers are brought to you by everybody's favorite website, Street Easy. And and not like they paid me off to say that. It's just that's where these numbers are from. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. And of course, as always, if you do have any um, questions when it comes to real estate, reach out to me, charles at botanston.com. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna go right back into our, our buying, which it looks like that is gonna be the area that we wanna focus on in the next couple of weeks is just what kind of content we're gonna be putting out along those lines. So 
Again, Charles at Botenston.com. Again, uh, and of course, the, the last thing I'll say for condos versus co-ops, there's a lot more co-ops available. So if you're looking at pricing, that, that has really decreased. I was talking to a buyer that's entering the marketplace. They're looking for a nice three bedroom. And I said, and they're looking for a condo just based on renovations and renting it out in the future and everything else, which we're gonna talk about the difference between them. There's not a lot of condos available. So that, that that's a different sign. That could be investors, that could be primary residents, that could be second homes. So the amount of co-ops I feel is the one that's really dragging, that's increasing the inventory and dragging the prices right now. So if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.